Hi guys, Jacob Dupre here. I'm gonna get you started using SliceX in FL Studio 20. SliceX allows you to import audio files and then cut them up into different samples that you can then trigger with your MIDI instrument. So I've already done that with a vocal sample of me singing. Here's what part of it sounds like. Um, um, love will keep us. So that's the original file. By the way, you can move the cursor around within SliceX by double clicking and then press spacebar and you can play from anywhere. Now I'm gonna play this loop that I've been working on and watch here, you'll see the different samples being triggered and you'll also see the notes on the keyboard down here lighting up. That's really cool, right? So how did I do that? Let's back up and start from the beginning. I'll close that out and open a new instance of SliceX. There it is. Then I'll come over to my browser. Holding. There's my vocal sample and then drag it into deck A. Now I have two decks by the way. There's deck B and deck A so you can have two clips in here at the same time. Now what I want to do is slice that up and you'll see the markers are what slice up the audio clip into smaller sections and then it automatically maps to the keys on a piano keyboard. So if I go over here to a very important tool which is called auto slicing, secondary click, I can do medium auto slicing. Sharp auto slicing will slice it very small, medium will do a little bit bigger, and dull will be the largest slice that it can do. I think medium is gonna work out well, so I'll click medium, and there it is. Now I can start playing around on my MIDI instrument and finding cool combinations. If I don't like where the markers are, I can drag them around or manually add new ones. So let's go to the beginning of the sample, play around a little bit with some of these sounds. So let's say I've decided that this is just cut up way too much. I can get rid of some of these markers. So I can go ahead and delete these two. Delete this one. And then delete this one. And now that sample spans this whole area. And if I go up a chromatic pitch, it'll play the next part. And then another chromatic pitch up. And there it is. I can do the same here. See, that doesn't really work well. So if I wanted to hear this whole section, just get rid of this second marker. And there it is. Now I've got the whole word. Now a sample like a dry vocal track like this one, it won't automatically slice it up when you import it. You'll have to do the auto slicing after. But if I were to enter in something like this, it's going to cut it up for me. So watch, I'm going to put it in deck B. See, it already added slicing. Because it's such a rhythmic track and there are drums in it and the transients are very defined, it was able to detect that slicing better. So now I could just start messing with it right away if I wanted to. And playing through the samples like that. There are a lot of features in SliceX, so let me give you a brief overview of all of them. First, I'm gonna open up the hint bar so that you can see better. This will actually show you everything I'm hovering over, every function, every menu. So watch this if you wanna keep track while I'm going through. If I press the loop button, it'll loop whatever I'm on. Brace, brace, brace. Or if I wanted to loop a specific section to listen to it. Love. Purer than all. And then play and stop, which is self-explanatory. Next to that, you have file where you can open a new project in SliceX. You can save the sample. You can export regions. Format, which allows you to quickly change from 16-bit to 32-bit. You can change from mono to stereo. You have more options here in properties where you can add info about your audio clip. You can change the sample rate, the format from stereo to mono. And then tempo, which is really cool because if you know the tempo of your audio clip, you can add in the BPM here 
or you can also have it auto detect the tempo. You can also set the number of beats that the audio clip is if you know what the number of beats is. Tools, so these are your different tools like normalizing, time stretching, looping, things like that. Then you can go to regions, which is very important because this is where you can do also do auto slicing from and grid slicing. And you can also detect the beats, detect pitch regions. You can freeze everything. If you freeze everything, that's actually a nice feature because then you can't move any of the markers. So you won't mess that up in case you want to leave those markers where they are. Snap, snap to different things. You can snap to the grid, snap to regions, snap to samples. The select tool, you can select the zoom part, select a previous region or select the next region. That's actually a really good shortcut to learn. If you highlight any area and you just click left or right on your direction pad, you can go back and forth, left and right between each sample, each marker. And you can play each one back with the space bar. Like that. There are some handy features in this area right here. Normalize is very important. A lot of times, you know, if you don't want to have to boost the whole output volume of SliceX, you can just normalize the audio clip so it'll raise the overall level. So if I just press Command A, highlight the whole clip, and press Normalize, now it has boosted the volume of the audio clip. Fade in, de-click in is very handy. You might want to fade in if you have some kind of sound you want to come in gradually. So let's go ahead and get rid of these markers and play this very first sample. So if I do fade in, you're going to see it decrease the sound to nothing and then gradually get louder. If I undo, I can show you the same thing, but fade out, de-click out, which will do the opposite. It'll make it come down like this. This is also handy for getting rid of clicking if you cut anywhere in the middle of an audio clip because you will get that clip sound, that clicking sound. So to de-click in or out is a useful tool. Next to that is time stretching, which allows you to either shrink or expand the time of any region that you highlight. Add remove markers, which we did before. You can add markers to further slice up or de-slice your sample. Medium auto slicing, we talked about that button there. And then dumping the score to the piano roll will allow you to dump it in. Remember, if you turn off auto dump, it won't do it for you automatically. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and create a new pattern, go back into slice X and click dump into piano roll. And there it, there it is. It just added it to pattern 10 right there. Holding you in my hands, your... Next to that, you have save as, and you can save it as a wave pack. Here's an important one, which is dragging, copy, and sample selection, which allows you to put it into your playlist. So say I wanted just this part right here that I have highlighted in my playlist. I can click, click and hold this button and then drag it into my playlist. Now that we're done with this section, we'll go ahead and change the view, which you can do with these four things here. Here's the smallest view that just shows you these upper controls and the keyboard. Now you can see your audio clip. Now you can see the more extended controls, and here's the full view. So we'll go here and start talking about these sections here. Here are your region settings, which you'll notice will change as you play different samples. So this is marker 78, and that particular sliced sound. 79, up and down. So you can quickly snap to your different settings for each marker. You have simple tools like panning, volume, your filter cutoff frequency and filter resonance. Then you have pitch. And just as a reminder, this is only changing the sound in marker 78. It won't change the others. So I could have completely customized settings for every single marker in this sample. You can also change the delay start time for the sample. 
So see it's starting later than where I'm pressing it. Here it's starting immediately. And now I'm going to play it and it's going to start later. There you go. And then you can also change the sample start. The articulator allows you to group several of these settings together into different articulators and you have eight of them which you can then have routed to specific markers either just one or a whole group of them. Your filter has simple things like low pass, band pass, band stop, and high pass. Then you have filter mode, single, dual, and triple. Let's go ahead and put a high pass on this marker here. The way I would do that is make sure that articulator one, articulator group is on, which it is, and then I would start changing the cut. I also need to make sure it's on single, because this is off, so I want filter mode on, and you'll see these three knobs light up. Now I can change the cutoff frequency. You can also automate these settings here. So if I secondary click on cut, you can see it says link to controller. Now all I have to do is turn one of the knobs on my controller. There it is. It recognized it and now I'm able to change the cutoff for articulator one in my high pass filter. This area gives me more control over things like pan, volume, the filter cutoff, filter resonance, the speed, and the sample start. This lower row here gives me envelope control, LFO, velocity mapping, control over my mod X and Y, which I can drag around here, and you'll see it change on the graph there, my mod Y, and then my random mapping. There's some really cool tricks you can do with this section here, like if you pair speed with envelope, so now I have speed and envelope engaged. And watch what happens as I add nodes to this graph and change it. I can add a node by secondary clicking. I'll drag that up. Cool, right? And then down here you have the simple envelope settings like decay time, sustain, your simple attack, decay, sustain, and release time. And you can see as I change attack, decay, it will change it on the graph for me. Let's change the view again and just go to this top section up here. These are simple controls. You have your master level for the whole SliceX project. You have your master randomness, your master LFO, and master pitch. I already briefly showed you the modulation graph here. You can change your X and Y by dragging around the point, or you can change them with the wheels here. You can also have it either smooth or not. This area is for drum layering mode. Here are your settings for that, like a cycle or you can do it random. This is your same deck crossfade. And then you can change the different crossfade settings here from different types of curves or linear or none. Auto dump, which we've talked about before, and these are how you change the views. This menu here gives you even more control over layering, like layering both tracks together, assigning deck A and B to articulators, and normalizing layered region levels. This allows you to toggle tempo-based time, and you can see that it changes the grid. This menu gives you more options, presets that you can use, your undo history, you can make everything loops, you can normalize the levels, this allows you to freeze editing so that you can't change anything, so it won't let you mess up what you've got. The draw tool will let you draw in to any of these here. So I can draw my LFO, I can draw in my envelope.
turn draw off, this will let me snap to the grid or not. So if I drag anything around, it will actually snap that point to the grid. If it's not on, it will simply drag the point more continuously. And many of these same settings are down here in the deck region as well. You can see here is freeze, here's snap to grid, but you also have view regions and markers, which you can toggle on and off. You can also do click free smooth editing, which you can toggle on and off. You also have to display the waveform as a spectrum, which you can toggle on and off. And this allows you to view the noise threshold mark, which you can toggle on and off like this and you'll see it added that line in the middle. As you can see, SliceX is a very powerful tool with a lot to explore, so hopefully this has been a good primer for you and you'll explore it even more. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching.